Recently, innovations, advanced weapons, and technological marvels that exceed the imaginations of mankind are being developed. Imagine sailing on a massive engineering wonder that is powerful enough to lay waste to any adversary that they come against. Sounds like something from a sci-fi thriller or fairy tale story. However, this technological marvel does exist in real life and is none other than the USS Gerald R. Ford, a carrier whose features and capabilities are unrivaled. What are the unique characteristics of this warship and what is the motive behind its development? Well, you are in luck, my friends. This incredible aircraft carrier went on its maiden voyage early in 2023 and just recently came back to U.S. soil two weeks ago. Is the USS Gerald R. Ford as formidable as they thought? How does it stack up after being deployed for nine months? Let's partake on a journey to discover this menacing sea beast in all of its American glory, shall we? Introducing the world's largest warship, that is the USS Gerald R. Ford. The formidable warship. USS Gerald R. Ford, also known as CVN-78, is a United States Navy aircraft carrier leading its class. The carrier is named after the 38th President of the United States, Gerald Ford, who served in the Navy during World War II, including combat duty on the light aircraft carrier Monterey in the Pacific Theater. Construction of USS Gerald R. Ford began on August 11, 2005, with the ceremonial cutting of a 15-ton steel plate. The keel was laid down on November 13, 2009, and the ship was christened on November 9, 2013. Gerald R. Ford joined the fleet to replace the decommissioned USS Enterprise CV-9-65 after 51 years of active service. Originally set for delivery in 2015, the carrier was handed over to the Navy on May 31, 2017 and officially commissioned by President Donald Trump on July 22, 2017. Its first deployment began on October 4, 2022. In 2006, while Gerald Ford was alive, Senator John Warner of Virginia suggested changing a defense spending bill to name CVN-78 the USS Gerald Ford. The final version, signed by President George W. Bush on October 7, 2006, expressed Congress's opinion that CVN-78 should be named the USS Gerald R. Ford. However, such statements are usually not binding, and the Navy wasn't obligated to name the ship after Ford. On January 3, 2007, former Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld announced that the aircraft carrier would be named after Ford during a eulogy for the President. Rumsfeld shared that he had informed Ford about this honor in person a few weeks before Ford's death. This made the aircraft carrier one of the few U.S. ships named after a living person. Later that day, the Navy confirmed that the carrier would indeed be named after the former President. On January 16, 2007, Navy Secretary Donald Winter officially named CVN-78 USS Gerald R. Ford, with Ford's daughter Susan Ford Bales as the ship's sponsor. The announcement took place at a Pentagon ceremony attended by Vice President Dick Cheney, Senators Warner and Levin, Major General Guy C. Swan III, Bales, Ford's other three children, and others. Several years after its construction, the United States Navy is finally upgrading the Gerald R. Ford-class nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. There is a plan to have 10 of these ships replace existing carriers one by one. The first one, the Gerald R. Ford, is replacing the Enterprise, or CVN-65, and later the Nimitz-class carriers. These carriers have a hull like the Nimitz class but include advanced technologies like the electromagnetic aircraft launch system from the CVN-CVN-21 program. They aim to be more efficient with features to reduce cost and operate with smaller crews. Features of the USS Gerald Gerald R. Ford class carriers show several improvements, including an advanced arresting gear, automation leading to a smaller crew requirement, upgraded RIM-162 evolved Sea Sparrow missile, dual-band radar initially developed for Zumwalt-class destroyers, electromagnetic aircraft launch system replacing traditional steam catapults, a new A-1B reactor for increased power generation, stealth features to reduce radar visibility, and the ability to carry up to 90 aircraft, including various types like Boeing F-A-18 Super Hornet, Boeing E-A-18G Growler, Grumman C-2 Greyhound, Northrop Grumman E-2 Hawkeye, Lockheed Martin F-35C Lightning II, Sikorsky SH-60 Seahawk helicopters, and unmanned combat aerial vehicles. Notably, the island's more aft location is a visible change, and these carriers are designed for reduced overall cost with a goal to sustain 160 sorties per day for over 30 days, with a surge capability of 270 sorties per day. Critics argue that these plans might be too optimistic, suggesting sortie rates similar to the Nimitz class would be more realistic. 
The Nimitz-class aircraft carriers, like the USS Nimitz commissioned in 1975, also played a very important role in the U.S. power protection strategy. Weighing around 100,000 tons when fully loaded, these carriers can reach speeds exceeding 30 knots and operate without refueling for 90 days. They have the capability to launch aircraft that can strike targets hundreds of miles away. For instance, the USS Theodore Roosevelt showcased remarkable endurance by spending 159 days at sea during Operation Enduring Freedom without needing to visit a port or refuel. To overcome limitations in the Nimitz-class design, the U.S. Navy introduced the CVN-21 program, which later became the CVN-78. This new design includes a larger flight deck, enhancements in handling weapons and materials, a more efficient propulsion system requiring fewer personnel, and a smaller island moved towards the back. Technologies like electromagnetic aircraft launch system and advanced arresting gear have been incorporated. A ship self-defense system enables the ship to take on new missions more effectively. The dual-band radar combines S-band and X-band radar. With these improvements, the Gerald R. Ford-class carriers can launch 25% more missions, produce three times the electrical power, and provide better living conditions for the crew. On the Nimitz-class carriers, the fourth catapult can't launch planes with a full load due to limited wing clearance on the flight deck edge. To improve efficiency, moving weapons from storage to the aircraft has been made faster. Higher capacity weapons elevators using linear motors will lift ordnance to a centralized rearming location. These elevators are strategically placed to avoid crossing aircraft areas, reducing congestion in hangars and on the flight deck. These changes aim to hypothetically enable the rearming of airplanes in a matter of minutes instead of hours, as mentioned by Rear Admiral Dennis M. Dwyer in 2008. The new Bechtel A1B reactor on the Gerald R. Ford class carrier is smaller, simpler, requires fewer crew members, and is much more powerful than the Nimitz class A4W reactor. Each Gerald R. Ford class carrier will have two reactors, providing at least 25% more power than the Nimitz class. The portion of thermal power used for electrical generation will be tripled. The Nimitz class carriers were designed in the 1960s and the Gerald R. Ford class addresses increased electricity demands from new technologies. These ships convert steam into power using turbines, with a larger output being a crucial part of the integrated warfare system. The Navy plans for these carriers to remain in service for over 90 years until 2105, allowing for future technological advancements. Currently, only half of the electrical power generation capacity is used, leaving the rest available for upcoming technologies. The electromagnetic aircraft launch system launches planes using a catapult with a linear induction motor instead of the steam piston used on the Nimitz class. EMALS provides a smoother acceleration for aircraft, causing less strain on their structures. It is lighter, anticipated to be more cost-effective with lower maintenance needs, and capable of launching both heavier and lighter planes compared to the steam piston system. Additionally, EMALS decreases the carrier's need for fresh water, reducing the demand for energy-consuming desalination. In the new advanced arresting gear system, electromagnetics are replacing hydraulics to slow and stop landing aircraft. While the current hydraulic system has been effective for over 50 years, AAG offers improvements. The existing system can't safely capture unmanned aerial vehicles due to stress on their airframes. AAG, using electromagnetics, allows controlled energy absorption through a turboelectric engine. This results in a smoother trap, reduces stress on airframes, and enhances flexibility, safety, and reliability. Additionally, AAG requires less maintenance and personnel. New Upgrades for the Unique Warship A new feature on the Gerald R. Ford class is an advanced radar system called the Dual Band Radar. Developed by Raytheon, this system is used for both Zumwalt-class guided missile destroyers and Gerald R. Ford-class aircraft carriers. By replacing 6 to 10 radar antennas with a single six-faced radar, the island size can be reduced. The DBR combines X-band and S-band radars, enhancing its search and tracking capabilities. The Zumwalt-class destroyers later omitted the S-band radar to cut costs. The dual-band radar on the Gerald R. Ford class has three faces dedicated to X-band radar for low-altitude tracking, while the other three faces handle S-band radar for target search and tracking in all-weather conditions. This system operates simultaneously over two electromagnetic frequency ranges, a first achieved using two frequencies managed by a single resource manager. The DBR is unique as it has no moving parts, minimizing maintenance and manning requirements. It consists of active arrays, receiver exciter cabinets, signal and data processor subsystems, and a central controller, all powered by the common array power system and cooled by the common array cooling system. 
Integration activities for the new Joint Strike Fighter Carrier Variant aircraft, the F-35C on the Gerald R. Ford class, have been impacted by delays in the development and testing of the aircraft. These activities involve testing the F-35C with CV-978's catapult and arresting gear systems, as well as assessing the ship's storage capabilities for the aircraft's components. Due to these delays, the U.S. Navy will not deploy the F-35C until at least 2018, a year after CV-78 delivery. This delay poses a risk of system incompatibilities and potential costly retrofits to the ship after its delivery. Efficient systems on Gerald R. Ford glass carriers have reduced the crew size to 2,600 sailors, around 700 fewer than a Nimitz-class carrier. Unlike the Nimitz-class with its large 180-man sleeping areas, the Ford-class has smaller 40-rack sleeping areas. These smaller areas are quieter, require less foot traffic, and include features like Wi-Fi-enabled lounges. The berths are stacked three high, each with locker space, and the associated heads have showers, vacuum-powered toilets, and sinks. But the ship has faced plumbing issues, with narrow pipes causing vacuum failures and clogged toilets, leading to costly cleaning solutions being used regularly. Newport News Shipbuilding utilized a 3D product model in Cadia V5 to design and plan the construction of the Gerald R. Ford class of aircraft carriers. The CVN-78 class was designed with improved weapons movement paths, minimizing horizontal movements within the ship. The plan includes advanced weapon elevators moving from storage to dedicated handling areas and sailors using motorized carts to transport weapons. Linear motors are being considered for these elevators. The redesign aims to enhance manpower and enhance the sortie generation rate, with the elevators strategically placed on the flight deck to avoid hindering aircraft operations. Thanks for watching, guys. While you're still hanging around, click on the link appearing on your screen to watch another one of our videos. And don't forget to subscribe.